our next speaker is Jeff Hopkins, who uh, has been observing this system photo photoelectrically uh, using a photon counting device since the 1980s. And uh, we got in touch uh, as a result of the last campaign, and he's been doing heroic amount of uh, uh, very high precision work. So uh, we'll get him started. Now, Jeff is deaf, so uh, I will transcribe your questions best as we can so he can address them right after. Bob? Bob? Yes. Yes. Good afternoon. During the 1982-1984 eclipse of Upsana Reggie, an international eclipse campaign was formed, and we published 13 hard copy periodic newsletters that were distributed around the world. This was before the internet. No PDF, no websites, no email. While the current eclipse started in August of 2009, to get a head start, a new campaign was started in May of 2006. A website was created. The site now has a vast amount of data, as well as over 20 published PDF newsletters. These are available free for download. In November of 2009, we started a Yahoo list to act as a forum for new instant communication uh, to all interested in the campaign. We have 57 official campaign members from 17 countries, with 24 members from 10, 10 different countries submitting high-quality photometric and spectroscopic data. Nearly 2,600 UBVRI photometric observations have uh, been submitted for the eclipse. During this campaign, there's a surprise. The last campaign saw a large amount of high-quality photometric uh, data by advanced amateurs and small observatories. Spectroscopic data were scarce and limited to large observatories. The current eclipse campaign has seen a big change. In addition to the high-quality photometric data, excellent spectroscopic uh, coverage of several spectral regions of Upsilon Regi has been provided by similarly advanced amateurs and small, observator, uh, small observatories. No longer are high-quality spectra reserved for only the large observatory. Right now, the next two contact points are predicted for uh, mid-March of this year and fourth contact uh, for May of this year. Now, I might point out these are photometric contact points. There's been a problem between spectroscopic, interferometric, and, and uh, photometric contact points, but this is for, con for the uh, photometric contact points. Okay, for this uh, uh, Eclipse campaign, uh, the photometry equipment consisted of single channel and CCD. CD, C, CCD was something new that we didn't have in the last eclipse. <coughs> At the Hopkins Phoenix Observatory, we have a uh, uh, UVV photon counting system. This has a uh, 1P21 photomultiplier tube. Very compact, provides very, uh, very good data. And what's interesting is this is the same one that I designed and built and used during the last eclipse. Also used uh, for single channel uh, photometry has been the Optech SSP3 and SSP4 photometers. The SSP3 uh, looked at the BVRI uh, bands and the SSP4, the JH infrared bands. For CCD, CCD photometry, because of the brightness of the star, usually a telescope is a disadvantage. Here's a case where we used a 50-millimeter uh, camera lens, adapter, and BVRI filters coupled to a Deep Sky Imager Pro CCD camera. This worked out well. For CCD, it requires some special techniques. One thing is linearity. This is the point where linearity breaks must be determined and exposure times set for maximum pixel ADU count to stay below that value. Uh, this is very easy to uh, get out of hand with uh, such a bright star. 
The next thing is undersampling. Because of the brightness of the star, a telescope is not needed, and usually just a camera lens is used. This makes a very fast setup and a very small star image, which presents a problem with undersampling. This is solved by defocusing and or just not tracking the uh, star during exposure. A pleasant surprise from this is the ability to use digital single lens reflex cameras on a tripod to do excellent V-band photometry. Here's a gentleman in Edinburgh, Scotland, Des Larning. He just uses his camera on a tripod. No tracking, uh, no big telescope, and he, he's been doing excellent work. He's submitted over 150 high-quality V-band photometric data points. Here's a plot of uh, the V-band from uh, Hopkins Phoenix Observatory. Oops. Here's, a, here's a similar plot. This is a composite from all the uh, data submitted. This is UB uh, uh, band data from the Hopkins Phoenix Observatory. And this is a composite of the UBV data. And lastly, we have a composite of the uh, R and I data. I don't have any data since I don't observe in those bands. Campaign spectroscopy. The Europeans lead the world in small observatory spectroscopy. Two of the people I consider leaders on this are Robin Ledbetter and Oliver Thizzy. Robin is the uh, campaign's uh, co editor for spectroscopy, and he is in England. Oliver uh, is in France, and he has been. Uh, uh, developing some uh, excellent and very reasonably priced spectroscopic equipment. Some of the spectroscopic equipment available ranges from uh, a low resolution star analyzer for about $200. Well, the most popular one is a high resolution Lars 3 spectrograph. Uh, you can get various uh, gratings, but the 2400 lines per millimeter grading is the most popular. This is around $3,000, and at the high end is an e-shell spectrograph that covers the whole visible spectrum, but at a very steep price tag of around $17,000. What is also very nice is some free software available, IRS, VSpec, and Space Office Odyssey. For the campaign, observations have been made in the sodium D lines to the potassium I lines. This is a, a sodium D line uh, spectra from uh, Hopkins Phoenix Observatory. This was, this was made out of uh, Eclipse. This is a uh, hydrogen alpha spectra made at uh, Blue Hills Observatory. You notice the big uh, uh, horn on the left there. That's a blue horn. Yeah. The hydrogen alpha spectrum is very strange. In addition to the main hydrogen alpha absorption line, there are sometimes large Doppler shifted emission lines bracketing it. These emission lines are also known as the hydrogen alpha blue and red wings or horns. These appear out of eclipse and do a wild and random dance. In addition, during most of the eclipse uh, totality, the red and blue horns disappeared completely. But a strange emission spike appeared in the main absorption line and migrated from the blue to the red side. And then towards the edge of totality, and just recently, uh, a very large red horn has appeared. This shows the, uh, uh, the, the starting out with just a blue horn, then a red and blue horn, and then just a red horn. And this shows the uh, emission spike. You notice the horns are completely gone. And this is a recent... Uh, uh, spectrum taken in uh, December that shows the, uh, the red horn has uh, come back. And over in England, Robin Ledbetter has been uh, very busy doing potassium uh, line spec spectrometry. Uh, he has taken a uh, layers 3 and modified it so he can get into the infrared region. For conclusion, technology has made great strides since the 1982-1984 eclipse. This has provided us with relatively inexpensive photometers, spectrographs, 
allowing even more people to do variable scientific observing. We would like to thank the people of Shylock Incorporated, normally uh, Oliver Thizzy for designing and making available reasonably priced, high quality spectroscopic equipment, and to several of the software developers who have provided free and excellent uh, spectroscopic software. And a special thanks to all the worldwide observers who have been and are continuing to contribute high quality photometric and spectroscopic data to the International Eclipse Campaign. Thank you.